Hey friends, um, welcome to June, yay! I apologize I didn't get May's readings done. Some of you were kind of like sending emails or leaving comments on different videos saying, what the fudge, where is May? Um, and if you follow on the Facebook page, that's a better place to keep updated with what's going on. I'm going to make a video about, um, you know, if, for those of you who have followed me for a long time, you know that I used to be super, super consistent and like ahead of the game. Um, but the last like year and a half to two years has been complete upheaval and like just crazy shit in my life. So I'm going to make a video about that later because there's like a lot of spiritual like lessons and things in that that a lot of people will benefit from, including um, like, you know, how to predict and navigate your way through different things that come up if you were to read your own tarot cards and like, anyway whatever. The thing I wanted to say before we started our reading is that moving forward, like after June, yeah, I would say like probably about August of this year, everything, all the ducks should be in a row and things will get back on track so you can look forward to that. Uh, but in advance of that, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are intending to purchase um, video readings, throughout like the first two weeks of June, there might be a delay in those. I um, am having a nose surgery, my nose is broken and it's causing sinus infections a lot. So I'll we'll have like this big thing on my face. And so um, like a little, uh, what do they call that, a splint? And then maybe some black eyes after that. So I don't know how up for video reading I'm going to be uh, straight out the gate. But I will be keeping on top of email readings and phone readings. So there's that. Um, now, this month, what the reading looks like for you guys is what you can expect in work with your money. Because sometimes those are related, sometimes they're not. In your love life, whether you're single, coupled, or in an on-again, off-again relationship, like an undefined relationship. Maybe it's new and it's not Facebook official. Maybe, um, you know, you're polyamorous. Maybe you're the other woman in a uh, relationship or, I guess, the other man, you know, whatever. Maybe it's a sugar daddy situation or a, a sugar baby situation. What do they call it when the guy, leave it in the comments if you know, when the guy, is it a kept man? If it's the dude that has a sugar mama? Anyway, yeah, if you know, let me know because I'm curious. And then we're also going to be looking at, you know, just kind of socially, like what do your relationships look like or what do you need to be aware of for this month, um, whether that is friends or family kind of situations. We're going to talk about your lucky day, um, which chakras you need to work on, what is your crystal of the month, uh, so many things in these readings this month. So um, let's just get started with it. Taurus. Okay, so what you can expect in work this month is that things are moving tremendously slowly. You're making forward movement, but it doesn't feel like that. So let's say you're waiting for a promotion. It's going to take longer than you think, or projects that you've started at work are going to take longer than you think, those sorts of things. They say that um, at work, if let's say you own a business. This would be a really great month for you to partner up with somebody. This is a month where um, your decisions are really going to matter and who you decide to work with on certain projects or work close to or even who you um, chat with at work is going to affect you um, tremendously in the month of June. Maybe because Gemini is... Um, you know, correlated to the month of June, the lover's card also can be attributed to Gemini, which is what we had there. The lover's card often means partnerships, but then again, it does mean choices. And the next card coming up for you here is saying, you know, sometimes it's better just not to say certain things. And this is why I bring up that concept of Gemini after um, I had pulled that card, is because notoriously they are known to be gossips. So if you don't want something that you say uh, to get around, perhaps it's a, you know, like a negative criticism of somebody or, um, you know, somebody frustrates you, then be careful 
and just keep your mouth shut or only tell somebody that you truly, truly trust. I'm not saying the Geminis are bad people. They're totally not. But I'm just saying for you as a Taurus this month, that's kind of um, the energy. And the person at work doesn't necessarily need to be a Gemini or have strong Gemini in their chart. I'm just saying that's um, the sort of vibe here that's going on and what you want to be aware of for the month of June. Now, in regards to your money for June, they're saying, you know, you should feel like you're in a better financial place and even if uh, there's not like more money available to you this month than there was you know last month or last year or whatever they're saying like your foundations for attracting more money or spending less money or whatever your routines maybe you set up a budget or like a system to sort of remind you to pay your bills on time that sort of stuff they're saying with that um, the foundation is there or this is a good month to create a strong foundation for you in regards to your monetary funds. They're saying, again, the energy is a little bit slow in that area of your life. Um, but, you know, it's like you can build something really, really quickly. And because you didn't take your time, it can just like kind of fall apart, right? Like you could build a castle out of popsicle sticks and just like glue them together really quick and now it's done. But then uh, you trip and you fall and you lean on it and the whole thing falls apart. But if you built it, you know, more methodically and you really took the time to wait for things to, for the glue to set before you added on the next piece of this, you know, popsicle stick castle that you build, it's going to be a lot stronger. And so they're saying like the fact that things are moving or they appear to be moving slowly, they are moving in a very strong, solid way that is laying the foundation for like a better financial flow or um, better ability to be able to hold on to money. And so, for example, if you're making investments, they might be the type of investment that doesn't just go and you know you make a billion dollars like right away they might be slow growing types of things maybe you put money into um a certain type of stock fund and you know it's like up a little it's down a little it's up a little it's down a little you don't really see a lot of growth or if you do see a lot of growth you're seeing like you know a dividend of 4 cents every you know 3 months but over the course of like the next 20 to 30 years it might go way up like a slow and steady climb and so that's kind of the vibrational energy of your money in the month of June. Now in regards to your social relationships which could be friends and or family they're saying um, it would be best to bond with the people in your life over self-care type of um, activities. So this could be like a friend date to get your nails done. This could be a, um, I just did a sister date with my sister the other day. And we, what we did was we um, went to play bingo, which was not, <laughs> what I'm saying, that's not a good form of self-care. It's actually um, a good way to feel anxious. <laughs> but a better, if I were a Taurus, a better way to have spent that time would be to go shopping, you know, um, not necessarily even to buy my son, myself something super fancy, a new dress or a new handbag, um, even just to go and buy groceries, like running errands with a friend is a really good way to create and strengthen your bonds with friends and or family. And, um, also this month, it's a really good time to potentially take some sort of a class that will help you down the road. So a cooking class with, you know, like a mommy and me kind of cooking class would be a good idea. Um, something, anything related to self-care is perfect. Um, in regard, so anyway, family and friendships, like your social relationships, that's where you need to be putting your energy. Um, they're saying like, this is how you're going to feel really satisfied and get what you want out of those relationships and how to strengthen them and, you know, really increase your bond and connection in the month of June. In regards to your love life, if you are a single Taurus, 
They're saying you should feel really, really confident about this. This month is a month where if you can like feel really comfortable in your own skin, your light is going to shine. People will be drawn to you. They'll find you, um, even if you look exactly the same, even if you behave exactly the same way that you typically do, there's something about you that just kind of radiates this sunshine, light, like sexy sort of mysterious which is interesting because that's not typically the energy with the wands card. But in this specific scenario, it's a mysterious yet sexy um, energy vibration that you're putting out there and people will be more physically attracted to you than usual and more excited to get to know you or to meet you. They're saying um, this month is kind of, you know, when you're single, it might be the sort of month where it's like, Whatever kinds of efforts you make towards finding love might not pay off this minute, but down the road, you'll be glad that you made them because it can come back to you um, way, way better than you anticipated. So maybe this month, you set a goal of... Um, you know, you say, okay, I'm kind of shy and I know I need to embrace this confidence energy. And so I'm just going to strike up a conversation, you know, with like two random hotties that I meet. So maybe this month, you know, it's not received well because, you know, they say, oh, I'm flattered, but I'm married or something like that. However, perhaps two, three months from now, because you put that energy out into the world, you might expect that, you know, once a week somebody compliments you or approaches you or, you know, the perfect person shows up and they say, hey, I don't know what it is, but I just felt compelled to come over here and strike up a conversation with you. Um, do you happen to be single? And boom, that's your person. And, you know, you ride off into the sunset. It's that kind of an energy where, you know, whatever you put in, to your attempts to find a mate in this month will pay off for you down the road. For some of you, it could pay off, you know, right away. But I feel like it's over the course of like a certain amount of time, which could be up to six years from now, which is fucking annoying. But this is a very generalized reading. It's for all the Tauruses who might see this. Therefore, um, that's why we're getting this broad range. But what they're saying is it will pay back dividends. Um, okay, so good. Now, for those of you who are coupled, the month of June is like that similar energy to what we experienced in the work portion of the reading, where they're like, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. Any sort of like snippiness or bitchiness that, um, you know, complaining, you know, beef that you have with your partner is not going to be received well. Even if your partner typically... Um, handles criticism and things like that well, not so much this month. Now, that being said, your partner sign will maybe make that different from one Taurus in a relationship to another. So you might want to cross watch. You might want to watch the love portion for um, your partner sign. Also, that being said, moon signs resonate better in regards to things um, that are about our emotions, right? So our love lives, um, how we're feeling, and, you know, whereas, like, our rising sign is how the outside world views us, so that would be more correlated to work. But anyway, that's kind of what I'm seeing here. Now, in regards to what's going on with your partner, they're like, honestly, like, you might have gone, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, they're like, no, seriously? Seriously heed this warning and take this advice. It's a better sort of outcome for you if you just zip it. Like, um, I'm trying to think, I think it might be Black Bear that sings this song, but they just, I'm, so everybody's gifts are different, right? And a lot of times my guides will communicate with me through song. And the song goes, shut the fuck up right now. And I can't remember the next lyrics because they don't apply. That's what they're playing in my head right now. Shut the fuck up. So if you know what the name of that song is, um, put it in the comments so that other people can listen to it. It's actually pretty good. I really like it. Uh, anything else? And they're like, yeah, like, 
all of these things that you hope and you wish for, uh, it's, it's not, they're not going to pan out the way that you want if you can't STFU this month. Like, just zip it. And, you know, typically, like, good, healthy relationships, it's like, yeah, we're communicating all the time. This month, no. Mm-mm. Um, for those of you in undefined relationships, which I mentioned are on again, off again, maybe it's not official or maybe, you know, it's got like a third party situation or whatever. They're saying, um, whoever the other person is in this situation, which if you have two other people in this situation, might be better to do a personal reading because um, then we can suss this out exactly. But if it's only one, one other person, what they're saying is watch out for deception and lies. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're cheating. Um, it could. But it might be like you ask them a question like, hey, how do you feel about this? And they're like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. But then, you know, down the road, let's say it was, okay, hey, I, this Saturday I know we had a date night scheduled, but we go on dates, like, very often. I wanted to know if I could hang out with my girlfriends. Like, is that going to mess you up? Like, you won't be disappointed, will you? And maybe your partner says, yeah, you know what, that's fine, no big deal. But they're lying. It's not fine, and they will resent you or bring it up later and throw it in your face, okay? So um, that's what I'm saying here is, you know, it could be straight up deception and lies. It could be, you know, that um, somebody steals something from you, <laughs> maybe your partner or unpartner, um, you know, takes a hundred bucks out of your Wallet, I mean, it could be anything like that, but there's definite deception. So they're saying this situation um, is not something that has anything to do with you. It's not your fault. You didn't manifest it. It's just a reflection of them kind of being a shithead. And so they're saying um, you should potentially connect with the spirit realm about this like while you're in like deep in the crisis uh they're saying you know whether you do that through prayer meditation yoga you give yourself a tarot reading get a tarot reading they're saying that connecting to the spirit realm is going to be the best thing for you so you can figure out a you know if you're not aware of where they're being deceptive you know you can suss that out b coming up with strategies on how to minimize the damage. C, figuring out how you can view this from a different perspective. Um, because, you know, sometimes the reason why somebody's deceiving you isn't always bad. Somebody might say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm busy on Friday and, um, you know, not available, whatever, whatever. But they just said that because behind the scenes they're setting up a surprise party for you, something like that. I mean, is it likely that that is the case? No, it's got more of a negative connotation, unfortunately, in the month of June. But they're saying, fact of the matter is, no matter what, you're not going to be able to control it or prevent them from doing it. And so this is why it's important to connect with that spirit realm so that you know how to emotionally process this so that it doesn't, like, really fuck up your vibe this month. They're saying, like... Your spirit guides are like, guess what? We don't want you to feel anxious. We don't want you to have more stress than is necessary. And like you honestly did not attract this and you don't even deserve it. Just the other party is being a fuckwad. Excuse the language, but it's the case. And they're like, you know, you can be super emotionally balanced and healthy about this. You really can be. And um, you can be very loving towards yourself and even towards the other person if you make that decision to connect to the spirit realm about it, okay? Now, um, the other things that we're going to go over for your month of June is your lucky day, which is the 5th of June. Lots of other signs had the 5th. So I made myself a note here, um, and the reason I bring that up is because maybe in that social aspect where it's like, hey, I'm going to do like a friend date or I'm going to, um, you know, whatever, this would, if you're going to go shopping with a friend, maybe 
your friend is one of these signs and you hit like an amazing sale or uh, who knows what, you know, maybe you walk into the nail salon and it's buy one, get one. That would be cool. So, um, or potentially other aspects of your chart, you, maybe you're Taurus and Capricorn and, you know, Cancer, you know, so, and so if more than one of those is the fifth, then you know for sure this is a day you want to be really tuned in and strategic about how you handle your affairs. So, um, not only is it you, but it is Capricorn and Virgo. Isn't that interesting that it ends up to be all earth signs? Hmm. I want to see, we're going to just deviate for a second here. Why is it that earth signs all have the fifth? And <laughs> I love it. They say that. Earth signs all have the fifth because something in relation to the earth sign sort of energy of like tangible things, day-to-day -day life, routines, money, career. They're like, look, a lot of earth signs have been going through it, been disappointed about some things that were way out of their control and, you know, things that they didn't really want. And so they're saying like the fifth marks the official date and time in which all that fucking bullshit is over. And so it'd be interesting. I don't do astrology, but if some of you do, if you can leave that in the comments, like um, your astrological input, I'm wondering if there's some sort of thing going on in relation to earth signs and why that would be the case. Hmm. Um, the other thing, so this month, if there is some sort of a mindset that you want to keep in touch with, they're like, envision yourself as the seeker. The thing you seek is at your feet and it always has been. And there, and you see how like, here's her foot where she's like grounding all of her weight, where she has been. Okay. And you're just now starting to reach toward and like almost, you know, dip your toe in towards realization of what it is that you've been looking for and how it's always been present. Now, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know, what is it that you've been seeking that you've been looking for that's been right in front of you? And um, some of you, they say, well, some of you have been looking for pain and heartache and lessons, you know, that whole what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Some of you have been, you know, through it. Some of you have had a really tough time. Um, but the other side of things, you know, coming out of that disappointment energy for earth signs generally, but especially Taurus, it's like you're finally starting to heal and understanding why you went through what you did, like the lessons that you can carry forward or the blessings that it brings in the aftermath. Because a lot of times, you know, something horrible happens, for example, we fall really ill, we get into a car accident or, you know, something horrible like that. But then after we go through it, then all of a sudden there's some sort of a miracle, right? So um, I'll give you a personal, a very personal example. Um, so I had like a really horrible, abusive partner. And so I got like a um, restraining order and I moved away in secret, right? Like my address is hidden. Like it's not on um, any government sort of records. Like I have a phony address so that I'm not found by this person. So anyway, the reason why this is a blessing, even though it was really painful and hard in the moment, is because it forced me to really be a grown up. I would have just like rented forever, but now I own a house and I can design it and create like all of the beautiful, um, like aesthetics that I want. Because since I mostly work from home, then, you know, I want it to be surrounded by beauty and be all these positive vibrations. And I wouldn't be able to totally do that had this horrible crap not happened. And I wouldn't have made like the emotional growth that I did. So 
that's just like one ex extreme kind of example of how when things go wrong, you know, maybe what we were wanting, what we were hoping for comes as a result later. And so what they're saying is, you know, it's not necessarily that we wanted this bad thing. It's that we want love and we want connection and we want bonding and strong ties. Okay. So whatever happened to you that was hard or painful or difficult is now creating a circumstance in which um, your bonds are going to be better, stronger, tighter, okay? Where perhaps you joined a support group of some sort and you made a new bestie. Or maybe you really relied hard on a friend that was more of just an acquaintance before and now you're more connected. Or maybe, you know, something really horrible happened to you, um, but as a result, you know, you ended up in a certain place in a certain time and so does your potential future you know, forever person. And then, you know, boom, you connect and, you know, you wouldn't have otherwise met had you not gone through that. You know, it's like everything happens for a reason, even if we don't understand the reason immediately. That's kind of the point is what they're saying is there's always, what is that phrase? When God closes the door, he opens a window. And sometimes that window is a real beautiful window. So, and sometimes, you know, the door he closed is on one side of the house or the building and the window's on another. And so, it, like, the view is better out the window than out the front door. That's also the case. Like, doors often face, like, busy streets. But windows might face, like, a forest that is beautiful or, you know, a garden that is, like, growing and blossoming and, you know, whatever. You get the metaphor. That's my point. Um, so, the other thing I wanted to mention is that your numerology uh, energy here is 81 and it correlates to leadership. So what they're saying with this one is like take advantage of opportunities to be a very strong, compassionate, but loving uh, leader. And so if this is, if you're going to apply this, you know, instead of kind of just saying like, okay, um, maybe my children are going to emulate the way that I behave. If you're going to apply this to work where I was talking about, hey, you know, if you don't have something nice to say, um, keep your mouth shut. Because this star here in the middle of this geometric stuff here, um, it's a pink color. So they're saying like, you might be afraid to take a leadership position or, you know, to really, um, express your know-how you might feel a little self-critical because of the orange here related to the fear chakra the sacral chakra but what they're saying is that you know if you can communicate and lead in a very loving and positive kind way with this pink energy here people will receive that very well and they will um, kind of root for you or boost you along this is going to help you then in this scenario to increase more quickly any sort of abundance financially or an abundance of, you know, friendships or expertise or whatever. that And all of that will happen very, very quickly and create a new reality or a new beginning for you that you really um, wanted to experience. So your color energy for the month, your power color, which some people will use um, in meditation. Some people will just like choose to wear this color. In your specific case this month, it's actually also a stone. It's a ruby. And so this is all about rejuvenating um, your body. So if you're to meditate and think about this color or really wear this color or, you know, carry a ruby around, this will help you to feel a lot more rejuvenated, to feel stronger. And so for those of you who have, who have really kind of been through the ringer in a physical way because I remember a couple months back that was a scenario for some Tauruses. Um, if that's the painful thing that you've gone through, maybe it was a car accident, maybe it was some sort of an injury, um, this is a powerful way to start kind of healing that. It'll increase also like your stamina. So if you are considering, you know, working out, for example, this is a really good month for that. It would be the kind of month where um, you make huge gains, you know, towards your physical fitness goals or things like that. Um, this is a color of prosperity 
It's one of courage. So it very well co coincides with the energy that I was talking about regarding um, leadership, abundance, and new beginnings as a result of like really asserting yourself in a positive and loving way. So with this one, um, I'm just looking for the affirmation here quickly. It says, please release all pain, stress, and tiredness and infuse my body with healing, rejuvenation, and revitalizing energy. And so, you know, if you pray... This is um, the way that you would do it. And with this one, too, I want you to see that the number here is eight. And they're saying it's just like this month that's going to work a lot more quickly and smoothly for you than it would have in months previous. Now, um, that with all of this stuff going on with the pink and the orange and the red, one might think that we're considering our lower chakras, but actually the chakra you want to focus on this month is your third eye, is what your spirit guides say. So um, your crystal of the month, it's going to coincide with that leadership energy there. Um, I could have picked probably a, a better specimen of the sunshine tangerine aura but they're all so beautiful that I didn't really look. I just grabbed one quick <laughs> out of my um, little storage container in my office. But what this one does, what its qualities are, is it eliminates feelings of powerlessness and fear. It increases your focus. So something especially helpful in regards to that work stuff and, or wherever it is that you're going to apply your leadership characteristics it's going to stimulate these energies of rebirth. Okay, well, how cool is that? Because we have two numbers talking about abundance and like new beginnings, like a new reality for you in a positive way. We talked about how, you know, you've created a foundation that will pay off for you over time. Fantastic. Energies of rebirth. And then it's also about new ways of living or like new projects. So it can... And I think this is why they were talking about your third eye chakra, you know, because the insight comes in through here, new ideas, for example, maybe you want to start a new business. Intuitively, you get this insight, you know, kind of the first steps and how to build this brick by brick by brick. Um, and this will help you with that. So it's going to increase your enthusiasm. It gives you energy and more creativity. All things that go along there, including with your fitness goals, as I mentioned. Um, it heals your emotions. It increases your confidence. All things we talked about. And you do have a more confident aura this month um, in regards to how other people view you. However, um, it's going to be just really potentiated and magical if you really feel it, if you're really gaining the confidence. Um, it's going to help you to feel more compassionate towards other people, to forgive them. It will improve family relationships for sure, especially parent-child ones. Um, if it's gloomy out where you live, it will help with that, you know, like seasonal affective disorder. So for my Minnesota peeps, for all of the Minneapolis viewers, um, hell yeah. Instead of like waiting the two days to get it in the mail from me, swing by my house, I'll hand you one because it has been some real bullshit, this weather here. <laughs> um, it helps you to ground yourself, like I said, better self-esteem, all of these things. So it does more than that. If you want one, it's on my website, and I'll mail it out along with a video series on how to use crystals and, like, a sheet that tells you how to care for it, you know, how to cleanse it, which angels are associated to it, chakras, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to cover for you is the affirmation that popped up for you guys, and it says, I choose healthy stimulation. During breaks at work, I speak positively with others and listen with compassion. There are no fucking coincidences. Do you see how like everything comes together? And the weird thing is, because I use so many different decks and um, in this reading, I was a couple hours ago for all 12 signs, I sat here and I was like, okay, which color energy for Taurus? Which one for Pisces? You know, what is the general theme? What is the affirmation? And I went, each, each deck I went one by one by one, all 12 of them. So I hadn't really looked to see what was going on, you know, like as a 
sort of full circle picture or interpretation is more just like making 12 separate piles on my kitchen table for when I sit down to do your reading. And so isn't it just so magical that every single thing that we talked about in your reading, which I know is like super excessively long, um, is kind of covered here. And as I say that, we were at 31 minutes and 33 seconds into the Taurus specific recording. And so what it's saying is like, this is because the ascended masters, right? Like Jesus, Buddha, like whatever, archangels, like, you know, the heavy hitters of the spirit world are surrounding you and um, it's fated, it's destiny. This is a big destiny month for Tauruses. And so they're saying like, you were destined to have this new beginning that starts now and I'm getting goosebumps. This is so awesome. I'm so excited to see like what your journey is over the course of, you know, the next year here. Because they're saying like this was faded. And um, with the number 33, okay, it's that divine energy. But this is like, I talked about ascended masters, right? The heavy hitters. But it's like the ultimate heavy hitters are 33 energies. So um, like Jesus, for example, was a 33 energy or the prophet Muhammad or the Buddha or whatever. And so um, they're saying like, you know, we're around you. We faded this. There is a specific purpose involved in all the things that happened to you and where you're headed next. It's new beginnings. And like, they're like, we're seriously not kidding. Like this is faded. It is divinely outlined for you. And it's going to create more balance and harmony in your life. Isn't that magical? I'm so excited for you. So anyway, the last thing that I wanted to mention, even though I think I said the last thing was the affirmation, totally forgot about this one. Um, your angel here, and so maybe with that three energy, the heavy hitter is Archangel Metatron. I how I talked about Archangels. And you know what? One thing I want to show you is like in that deck, not all of them have a specific angel or Archangel associated to it. So like I said, it's fate. There are no accidents. Can't make this shit up. Like I couldn't have planned all the cards that popped out for you in this reading better. I didn't pick it, you know, like the spirit world does this. I just, um, I'm like an interpreter, right? Like they say, here's the stuff and then I translate it. Um, anyway, Archangel Metatron, that's your heavy hitter. <laughs> you can, um, Connect with him just by thought or, you know, in meditation, asking for help. Now, um, I want you to notice how all of this stuff around dude's head, you know, I talked about prayer before, the things we want to ask for. Um, all of this stuff is around the head and um, somewhat correlated then to the third eye. Okay, because that is our only relevant head chakra. You, the words that come out of our mouth come from the throat chakra. Above us is the crown chakra. But this is like all surrounding it here. And with these five little lights here going around, okay, fives are the energy of disharmony, discord, like things that are challenging, but for a higher good that creates balance. If you count this one as a six, and they're saying, you know, pray, talk to us. Whatever your method of connecting to the spirit world, absolutely do it this month, whether it's, you know, through some sort of ritual or whatever. Um, they're saying, ask him to clear your vibes. Um, thank you, Metatron, for clearing my energy field. Because as we mentioned, your energy field is going to be more and more expansive this month and more powerful to the point where other people notice it more than they usually do. So you want the spirit world to cleanse you, eliminate anything um, that is toxic for you, like with that five energy, from your head, from your heart, helping with forgiveness and compassion, as I mentioned. Um, even, you know, correlating to that throat chakra when it's like, help me to just not say bitchy or critical things. Help me to watch my tone at work. Um, but this is also like sort of an opportunity to also declutter your environment because a cluttered visual 
space is also going to create confusion and a cluttered mind. So this is a really good month to get super clear um, on a lot of things in life, mentally, emotionally. Metatron's going to be your dude to help you out. And it's not even an accident that Metatron is the angel that they suggest because he's one that walked the earth as a human before he became like this super powerful like right hand uh, like God's short list of, of like go-to guys, okay? Um, so more than anybody, well, I wouldn't say anybody, but more than most archangels, okay? Bro knows how to really be compassionate and understand like the discomforts that come along with being a human being. And so if somebody's going to help you and guide you, good choice there. Good choice there because they're very going to be very compassionate. He's going to really get it. A good um, spirit to connect to in meditation or in prayer. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. We want to, oh, I remember what I was going to say now. As far as like that cleaning and clear, clearing and, um, you know, cleansing type of energy, I didn't include health as a portion of your reading, but because it did come up potentially as like, oh, this is a good month to like really focus on, you know, maybe fitness, for example. Um, I'm I'm going to make an exception for, for the Tauruses and just tack that on to the end of the reading here. Um, is there anything specifically that you should be working on, you know, with like your diet? Should you do a cleanse or anything like that? Just because Metatron is popping up here, it's being like, cleanse everything. Ask me to help you clear everything. Um, they're saying, like, it's it's not really anything that you need to decide to implement. It's just more about quitting things that are bad. So let's say um, you had been thinking about quitting smoking. This is a good month to do that. It's a good month to cut it out, but you don't have to add anything new. Or maybe you wanted to reduce the amount of sugar you eat, something like that. But they're like, you know, you don't have to, like, do some weird cleanse. You don't have to mix, like, lemon juice and cayenne pepper or, like, start celery juicing or something like that. No. They're just, like, it's just about, like, eliminating things. So, wow. I am so excited to find out how June goes for you. But more than that, because a lot of your energies are slow moving, but, you know, slow with a with a strong foundation of growth to see how this year transpires. I love you so much, Taurus. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!